hip hop video goes to <clears throat> Drake featuring Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. We say, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So much for being optimistic. They say love is in the air, so I. Hold my breath till my face turn purple. Keep a few back in my circle. My saying like ain't no curfew. But if you wave, then I will serve you. I will get you. Well, uh, first of all, um. Obviously got to thank Lil Wayne because he killed the song and we did the song together and he did the hook. I got to thank Young Money, everybody from Young Money. I got to thank OB for being in the video. Shout out to Hamilton. Shout out to Toronto one time. And um, I'm going to tell you, I used to, um, you know, the videos is about, you know, being, being me, being black and Jewish. I used to go to this school. Um, I went to this house party one time. And uh, when I showed up there, you know, it was a bunch of kids. I ended up like getting made fun of. But the point is, I want to dedicate this award to like any kid that's ever had a long walk home by yourself. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, this is to you, man, for real. We made it, bitch. Yeah, I mean, I think the bullying was subtle. I think the bu the bullying was a lot of a lot of it was behind his back, unfortunately. Even when he was on Degrassi as an actor the people that were still going to Forest Hill were sort of making fun of him. You know, I think that's kind of what he's talking about and started from the bottom, in a way. Because even when you make it, people can still bring you down. For him, it was also a little bit different because uh, he came from a mixed family. And in our neighborhoods, you didn't have a lot of like mixed kids, right? So uh, yeah, it was, it was a little bit tough for him. And I remember probably even with in different situations with girls and stuff like that. People, everybody liked him. He was a likable guy, right? But uh, it was, I could always feel that it, it wasn't the easiest for him. He was a heartbreak kid. Yeah, that's true. That's but it was the opposite way. Like it was like his heart getting broken mostly versus, I mean, I'm sure that changed, that, obviously that's changed now. Well, that goes without saying. That goes without saying. But I, I think that was part of it. Like in terms of his like upbringing, I, I thought that was a challenge. It seemed like that was a challenge for him being, I guess, um, you know, a bit different. But when we were going here, I remember that it was uh, hard socially, not just for Aubrey, but I think grade nine was a hard year for all of us, uh, coming into a new school and being around new, new people, adjusting to different social pressures. Um, but this is where Aubrey really started rapping, writing lyrics, I mean, he was writing some stuff before, but it was really between, I think, grade eight and grade nine when he started taking it seriously. Okay, we're gonna start. I go by the name of Drake, and uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of live by this joint. I kind of, when I do a show, I like to tell people where I'm from, you know, because a lot of artists, you know, me, dudes like me and JB, you know, we ain't afraid to say where we from. We from Toronto, and we proud. You know what I'm saying? So if you from Toronto, you proud to be here, something. You know what I tell them? I tell them I'm from the city where people be getting threatened for showing they face of precincts. Ladies leasing, arranging, and renting basements of region. People making that change and spit in places that's decent. Cost from summers before they replace them with something recent. Memphis, them rubber bands will show people your grind is money. Here they just quit to see it and claim it. It's kind of funny. They buy into the gimmick instead of saying it's him again. Tried and it take them too long to realize they mimicking. Said that people had trouble naming their favorite rapper. Some of them getting older. Most of them in a the trap in reality they working but none of them on the map so now they desperate and they try to get famous chilling with apple they want to have these videos like t.i.p and b.i.g female singers want to be ciara or in d.i.re or somebody they can call their own for that they d.i.g rather say i sound like her instead of saying see i'm me it kind of gets repetitive like people from my past just pop up and ask me if i got beef with jd's from maximus i laugh and just say that i'm busy repping my city yo yeah i had a thing with that girl from mario video yeah i went to metro at x's party with diddy though no i can't explain why these artists i tend to Pity though, saying time shot the chaos, Socrates and Moriarty. Boy, one to D to the JB, you know for sure we party. Julie Black, Project Bounce listeners with a Thule strap. State zoos who frequently visit but never knew we rap. Glenn Lewis, make sure you put it down when you 
and truly back. By the way, my name is Drake and this is my debut in fact. What are you what are you selling? <laughs> for me. What's he selling? You have a lawn ticket or something? Yes, I do. How much are you selling them for? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you 80 bucks. We're talking about ops, which we know if you're looking at this video, I guess, that he's someone to admire for reasons. What they are, maybe you'll find out by the end of this documentary. Nonetheless, my name is Sean. I've known him since we went to the school as for so. Great place. You learn a lot of things here. You also realize that wealth doesn't buy health. And the strength that you get is all about matching your ambition and effort. Certain people do that and certain people don't. So that's how you have success stories. I met Aubrey in grade five when I was at Forest Hill Public School. It was the first day of class. And this funny kid with a red jumpsuit sat next to me. I just knew right away that he had that strange personality ratio of different characteristics. Everybody knows him as Drake. When we were on these grounds, when he was, he had lofty ambitions of being an entertainer, his name was Jestar. Jestar. Jestar, yeah. He would like come to my house and he'd want to like take my dad's video recorder and, or sorry, camcorder, as they would say back in the day. This was also the ones we put a VHS in, and it's about, like, this big. He, like, went down to my recycling bin in my, in my house, and he, he took out a, a wine bottle that my parents had finished, and he took out, he took um, aluminum foil and wrapped the bottle in aluminum foil, and then took a black ma magic marker and wrote Cristal on it where I was kind of just going along and doing my part, it was like he was like, he was still like the center of the show, you know, when we did that. And so like now, that's perfectly obvious. Like when I think back on it, it's like, of course he did, right? Like maybe that's just like he had that uh, flair. Yo, boss ain't golden gates. Those who break, they break. When they need their 400 pound weight, you gotta rule the world. He had a logo with it, at everything. It was like, oh, he, he already had his career plotted out. I, I think certain people who have to strategize a little more than others, have to do it for certain reasons. Because not everything is handed to anybody. Despite his, uh, I came from Forest Hill ideals, it wasn't all like silver spooning. Because I look over there, I'm like, oh my God, Benz, Ferrari, Bentley. And it's sort of like, I grew up here. And then you grow to say, hey, maybe I can have one too. And just because you grew up to own one, doesn't necessarily mean that you always had it, but it made a lasting impression on you. Started from the bottom, now my whole team here. Nigga, started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team fucking here. Somewhere inside uh, this venue, Drake is getting ready for his set, and uh, here I am on the outside. relationship with Sandy. I feel like that's a very important person in his life. That is, yeah. Uh, well, I I remember Sandy and I mean she's one of the nicest people that I've met in my lifetime and uh, she was just I'm talking about Sandy uh, like how she acted towards me and uh, she was always so welcoming and uh, we used to hang out at his house all the time. She she never had a problem with that. She wanted us to be there as much as possible. I mean, she was just a magnificent lady, and she really, uh, she really helped us actually do the things we wanted as kids. His dad definitely let him down. You know, I was definitely around enough to know that his dad had, you know, dropped the ball a number of times on that. He wasn't reliable, but Aubrey always gave him the benefit of the doubt. It was like one of those movies. Parents are divorced. The kid's like waiting for his dad to like come pick him up on the Friday, and his dad just wouldn't show. 
You know, his dad wouldn't show. My dad used to gig around the city. Um, and when he used to have me, when it was his time to, you know, because my, my parents are my parents are divorced. So when he when he used to have his time with me, um, he used to very much against my mother's will take me to his gigs, like at the bars, when I was like probably like six or seven years old, and I used to sit and watch him play. Your your parents divorced when you were a kid. You grew up in Toronto while your dad lived in Memphis. Yes. What was it like going back between Toronto and Memphis for you? It was pivotal to me in, in, in shaping the man that I am today. Back and forth across the borderline, hate to leave the city, but I gotta do the overtime. Gone all the time, even the important times. I should let you know ahead, I'm coming back on my worst behavior. Remember? My memory hasn't changed. It's sort of the, what I see Aubrey as is what I've always seen him accomplishing. And sort of, you know, taking it back to going to Memphis, you know. What did that mean, going to Memphis, for him? It meant, uh, well, I, I can't actually, I can't answer that question. He has to answer that for himself. Did he ever talk to you about it, about his trip? Uh, well, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> you went to uh, yeah, we went to Memphis twice. First time we took the bus, it took 25 hours. Way too long. 25 hours on a bus? Like, we went, took the trip, said, we're gonna come back and have the best music ever. It's gonna take over the world type thing. We went to clubs, we had people threw parties, and like, okay, it's um, Yo Gotti and his people and the, whatever went in there. Yo Gotti's manager had heard some of Aubrey's music and saw potential in it and couldn't figure out how to how to sell it. I imagine that must have been pretty hard. I don't think that it it was that difficult of a situation to get through because it kind of like, it was motivation. It was sort of like, I, I'm not good, okay. I'm just gonna fuck good and be great then. Being of a mixed race like he was, I'm sure that he dealt with a lot of, you know, racial issues and prejudice. So in order for you to survive through that, you have to have a solid family and your mother telling you, be you, you have to be yourself. It's all you have left is yourself at certain points. And I felt like even during the period when we were friends, he was pretty alone for the most part. Um, he would express to me about friends that turned their backs on him and things like that. I thought it was weird at the time. I was like, why is this guy telling me this? But. In retrospect, I completely, I see, I see, I see, I see everything, full circle. It was very, um, you know, obviously like predominantly white, you know, uh, all Jewish school. So it was kind of difficult for young kids to understand how I was like black, but Jewish. It was, it was just tough to find people with an open mind. It almost took him like have to go through that situation in grade nine to him to break out. He clearly like just broke out of his shell once uh, once he moved, you know, like once he got the gig under Grosky and he was doing his own thing and like, and that that was really what it was. Like he just did his own thing. I, like I, once grade ten came along, he didn't care. Like he went for it, he got it, and like he just moved on. Do you miss Drake? Uh, yeah. As a friend, yeah, definitely. Do you miss Drake? I do. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. Uh... I, I miss him, of course, as a friend because we spent all these years together and we grew up together, right? I'm gonna get my Blackberry back tomorrow. Hit you up on BBM. Uh, Don't worry about it. But he still has a Blackberry. He has to. He's a Canadian ambassador, is he not? He, he, he's wealthy enough to own uh, a lot of devices. Yeah, I miss you. Miss you and you know, great work. Keep it up. Go to the top. That's all, man. Now you're biggie. <laughs>